Hello, um, we've got um, a skip for AJ Owens Builders. Um, is there any way we'd be able to get that picked up today? Do you know what's in the skip? Uh, it's just soil. Soil? Full? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I'll get this side. Uh, no worries, thank you very much. Is there, sorry, is there a reason that it needs to go today? Uh, um, we've got, a, well, I've got a tipper full of hardcore ready to um, go into the house, but that skips in the way of, um, we have like conveyor belts, you know, that take it into the house. Mm, yeah, okay. So, anyway. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't do anything until the skip's gone. Uh, sorry, I just need, if I put a note on like that, then it's more likely that Jim will know what to do. Okay. Okay. Thank no, you No, thank you very much. Right, bye. Bye, wait. So, it is quarter to eight, Friday morning. Ah, oh, I was meant to go, I was meant to pay the lads then, I forgot. Uh, I might do it when I get here, just so I can, don't get pestered later on. Um, Friday morning, and I've just phoned Olden Brothers to see if they can get the skip, because the skip's right in the way of where we want to put the tipper, so we can put the conveyors underneath it and get it into the house. And then, who else? I need to phone someone else. Oh, I need to ring Chestnut, see if we can get 150 million chilies dropped off today, for, to get it all ready for concrete Monday. So we can get that ground floor concreted Monday. That'd be, you know, a big, a big step towards getting it, getting it done. But it'll have to be last thing Monday because otherwise the lads won't be able to do anything. Um, and I need to ring uh, the structural engineer for some um, comments or calcs for. I don't even think it'd be calcs, but. Just for his comments, really, on um, the building inspectors asked because we took the chimney stack out. He wants a goal post frame putting in in the like underneath the ridge to hold the wall from lateral restraint. However, I was uh, debating that you know the lateral restraint that was there was timbers that run the other way. And he's saying, well, the brick wall was a lateral strength. And I was like, okay, well, it would be up to 2.6 metres. But then, obviously, the brick wall stopped for the hallway. And then you've got the stairs. So it didn't actually join to the other side. So it seems overkill. I, I mean, we've been, we've, we've been doing these jobs for seven years. No one's ever asked us to put a goal post in, like, to take the floor out. You take the floor out and put a new one in. And the floor we're putting in is bolted to the wall and nailed in like the full like perimeter so it, it is it is sort of got like far better lateral strength than what was there and he was saying that well the chimney stacks were built back in the day and they get they give a lateral strength obviously because they come out it's almost like a bracing if you were doing a garden wall over a certain length however i also said to him well the other side of the the other side of the house is four metres longer that wall and it's the party wall between us and the next terrace and that's got no chimney either side so that doesn't you know it obviously wasn't built like that for that reason however I understand that it does provide but if the other side's got a four metre wall longer than the left if the right side's got a four metre stretch two skin thick all the way surely there's no but then we're into an argument of like, well, they built this was built 100 years ago, 120 years ago maybe, um, and like now obviously it's different. But what we're putting in is, you know, far better than what we took out. So I know there's always been a, a building regs thing that if if you don't make something worse, you can leave it in. If that makes sense. So obviously, uh, at one point we used to get we used to like expose like take the plaster off and if you had a timber if you had a timber lintel above your window uh, we used to have an inspector who'd be like anytime you expose a timber lintel you need to swap them all for concrete or steel even if they were absolutely fine and then they went back to well actually you don't have to do that otherwise you know we'd walk into everyone's house and we'd end up rebuilding their house um, to bring it up to current regs so they have certain bits that they say yeah and whatever too. So the stuff, there is a rule, because I only learned this on my house when we were uh, renovating it. 
uh, that if you remove a percentage of plaster render, you then have to bring it up to um, a more recent code in terms of building legs. So I think it was if you took 75% of plaster off the internal, you then had to insulate it internally, which obviously probably sounds a bit overkill, but obviously that's the rules. And I mean, I can't really moan, we've got two skips there. Um, got nowhere to park. <laughs> We can't, the last people who can moan about parking around these jobs is us who turn tennis houses into six, seven, eight beds. Ben's nicked an ash spot. He could have went in that one, couldn't he? Hold on. Can you not go there and I can get in here? Um, in front of that silver car? No? Ah, oh, lass. Right. So, um, yesterday we had, um, what, nine people in, and I go through this all the time in work, I cut back and I'd have all the multi-skilled lads and it's totally stress-free, I just come in and there's more done than I was thinking, and then someone messages me and says, oh, I've got a labourer there who's like really good, he can like, you know, do everything and he'll want to learn and he'll, you know, it could be amazing for you and so I go yeah go and get them in because that's my like philosophy that do what I did you get people in you teach them and you know they crack on um, but I then end up with so yesterday I was walked in and in the morning I'd set out one two three four like five things to do which was like you know simple things just literally moving stuff into a skip doing this doing that and End of the day, none of it was done. And I was just like, we've got nine people on this job. The maximum people you have on these student jobs is five. Like anything over five is just, you're just burning money. So yesterday, I just noticed it straight away. It was like, right, you know, we've only got a couple of days and then we can start the next job. Um, and just yesterday, come in and lads were just stood around. Ben said they were carrying... Um, aerated block so i don't know what the i think it's 25 kilograms isn't it what health and safety say you can carry well I, probably one of them block weighs i don't even know a kilogram um and lads were carrying one in one aerated block i'm gonna google how much they weigh but normally i'd carry like two dense block in so i'd be expecting to carry like four aerated block um Ben said yeah, they were in a line doing like one air eater block each. And then he said just like, you know, when I come in, people just stood around talking. Um, you're doing something, people are coming over, just like chatting to you. And I'm like, this isn't this isn't like your break. This isn't like it's only, oh, great if everyone if everything's cracking on, I'm getting loads done, yeah, stop and have a break and a chat. But you, you can't just do that all day. And it, it's just like a it's a mentality that like the other day on the yard where the lads just started packing away and there was like they'd made a start on three pallets and there wasn't uh, they didn't finish a pallet finish a pallet finish a pallet and then I ended up just going and finishing it because to me it's like you've got a job for the day like if I have to stay one thing that burns burns me out which I don't think it'll ever change I mean obviously me and Ben the others do it but like the lads get paid say hourly yeah they get paid per minute, whatever it is. If they stay late, they get paid. If they come in late, like they're happy to come in late and have longer lunches and have more breaks, but they will not work one minute past half four, which is what like they're meant to get meant to work to. If you ask someone to stay a minute past, so yesterday 
most of the lads got off about four o'clock because they've been coming in at half seven. So that's gone now. No one's coming in at half seven anymore. Um, everyone works the same hours because it's just me and Ben who end up tidying the whole site on our own, and it's not it's not good enough. You know what I mean? Me and Ben are the ones that the labourers should be. That's what they're paid to do. Like obviously keep everything tidy, put stuff away, and it, it like I say it just always ends up me and Ben doing it. So that needs to change. So yesterday I said to the lads, I went, look, too many on this job. The other job um, we haven't got the keys to yet. It's getting an asbestos report done before we rip it out. So we, we, we haven't even got another job on. So literally tomorrow, if you've got something else to do, um, I only need like these five people in tomorrow and that's it. And the other lads, the labourers were like, well, kick it off. And all I've said is I've, I've one day off so I can organise work open another job up so that we're not not got nine lads on one job um and two of them have left the group one thing i'll say is never ever ever like leave on bad terms don't don't whatever your ego or philosophy or whatever i've had stuff people done like clearly wrong to me and you just turn around and you go do you know what i don't agree with that however you know thanks for thanks for everything you've done Thanks for your work, your hard work, and you know I'll let you know if if something pops up or you know because always in the I get I get loads of people who've left come and message me back saying look oh you know I didn't realise you know it, it was actually better than I thought the grass isn't greener any chance I can come back and yeah I I I love taking people back who've been in because it saves me a job and time of like you know I'm gonna train them up again I'm gonna think they just come in they know and if they've gone away. And had more experience than realised, hold on, there's actually this other boss is an absolute nightmare compared to Andy. Then they come back with, with more experience and more knowledge and they're like more more likely to like, you know, work a bit harder and do whatever, which is just general life, isn't it? I I teach people to do to work hard. If you want to come in and like I get the lads come in so like uh, and you can spot them straight away. You hear them talk and going, oh, lad, me mates on this job and all they do is sit off all day and it's boss. Oh, they just get paid to sit off. And I'm like, hey, if that's what you want to learn, if you want to teach yourself to go into work and sit off and do nothing, if you want to come in work with us, I will teach you how much should be done in a day. I will train you to run your own business at like maximum capacity, not, you know, Ah, oh, we've done a bit of digging today. Let's have the rest of the day off. Ah, oh, you know, to, like that's not how we work. That's not how I wanna. That's not how I would. Uh, how I'd wanna be taught if it was the other way round either. I know people like I enjoy working hard. It's weird. Me and like, we were chatting about it in the van the other day. Like the other day when I had like a bad bad day and I just went to the yard and was just moving bricks because I felt like I needed to exhaust myself a little bit and so that I could go home and feel like I'd done something that day. But we're not all the same, and as Stephen Bartlett said, I went and done a talk with him, and he was like, they don't change. They literally, he said, if you think you can change someone, you can't, just get rid of them. So, so two lads have left the group, um, another one I've let go for now, and then um, yeah, I'll be having a chat with the other one so that we can just bring the team right back to where it is, and it's an unfortunate thing to do, however, that is part of business. It's a business, it's not a charity, it's not... You can have friends and whatever in this, and you know I've I've had to let friends go, like who I've been mates with for years, who would come and work for me, and I was just like, look, it's just not, I'm not getting value for money, are you? That's what it comes down to. End of the day, value for money. All right, let's go and see how we're getting on. Are you, turn that music down, and then are you ready for this? Go ahead. <laughs> are you ready for this? So I was asking them yesterday about where he wants the door and the window because we were going to start blocking that up, weren't we? And he said that um, he wants to make the extension bigger. So on permitted development, you can do obviously three metres of the original footprint. So now he wants us to extend three metres here. Yeah. 
No back garden. Well, it might, it might, it'll be a bit smaller because you can only extend 50% of your cartilage. So if you add the front garden and the back garden up and divide by two, that's the most your footprint of your extension can be. So that's why on some of the extensions you'll see they're like a thin one and you think, why haven't they done like from there all the way back to the, to the garden wall? So he might do that. What he'll probably do is go from here and just go out as far as much as the 50% and leave like a little alleyway. It's mad all these rules, isn't it? Because you think the house would be better if it went to the back wall and done three metres. And obviously if you've got this garden, you're not bothered about <laughs> a garden as such. But, so yeah, um, quarter past eight and the plans have changed. Uh, so we'll have to rethink. This is why it's good that we haven't got 10 people in today because otherwise we'll be thinking now Are you still recording? Yeah <laughs> <laughs> Seriously But It takes a week to dig that and I go you know what I might change it And we've got to get the inspector back out Yeah it's got a point But you know what I mean it, that, I'm used to this we've been doing it for years it's, this happens like It is back It is This has happened loads hasn't it though where you just we start doing something he goes actually don't do that These have built dormers and then realised that they weren't allowed to and had to strip them down. So, <laughs> this isn't that bad. Considering, like, where we're at now, this is probably, like, a minor change in terms of... I'd rather strip a dorm than dig them in. Would you? <laughs> um, I mean, still, crack on with this. This doesn't change, does it? I think, either way, let's get this dugout levelled hardcore, get the piping, get... That, that doesn't change today's plan. Yeah, at least we didn't put that in. <laughs> at least we didn't put the manhole there. Um, so it doesn't change what we're doing today. It just means that, you know, Monday we won't, we, we won't concrete, we'll dig that. So the plan now is just to get this hardcore level ready for insulation and concrete. Good job I didn't order the insulation, yeah. Otherwise that would have been another thing in the way. Yeah? Hold on, before the drive off, see belt check. You got your goggles on for being in the van. <laughs> I don't know, I'm getting my gloves on. Um, weirdly, like, obviously I put on that, you know, I'm getting advised to, like, stop fil stop filming and stop posting all, all this and that. And, like, weirdly people are saying, like, oh, just do more van-like things where you talk about the work and that. And I was thinking, like, I've been trying to do less of that because it's, like, I think it's I think it's boring for people. If I, if I clicked on someone's YouTube channel and it was just them in a van all day, yeah. I'd be like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> But people are saying, oh yeah, just do more of them and talk about what you're doing and that, but I'm thinking, no, we wanna we wanna just crack on. Why have um, why have have you spoke to Dave? Yeah. I'm not Dave. Oh, little Dave. Dave Snowy. No. Who? He's left him and Blaine have left the group. Who's Dave Snowy? Oh, Dave McQueen. Snowy me. Now he's a fella who used to work for us. Who, oh, yeah, I mean. Ben's called Ben's called Dave Dave Snowy, so that uh, we can distinguish between your big, uncle and Big Dave and Little Dave. Dave. <laughs> I tell you what, yeah. I'm gonna get some toast if he's want anything. I just need a cold drink. I'm gonna get some toast. Nice. Um, but yeah, why have they left the group? I've literally did. Did you did that come across different? Like I put in the group that I need a day to sort out the next it. job. You haven't, no, you haven't, you haven't really put that in before with all them, have you? Like that, which is normal. Like they, they knew you mean? Yeah. Well, it, it, it always gets to this point, doesn't it, where we have five labours. So, I've just been one of the many lockups I've got that hopefully all come together when the yard's up and running. And we've just picked up uh, the genie lift to be able to get this big steel in at the back of the house. He's happy that we're not lifting that big stealing. Yeah. Phone club here. Mm -hmm. So, who's the best? Who's the best actor? Who's the best actor out of you? Because uh, I'm going to go in the yellow van. I'm going to pretend to be driving around in the van, and I'm just going to do as many like illegal things as I can, and then. <laughs> I'm going to do as many as legal things I can and obviously make a joke of the neighbours, like, sitting there filming it all. 
So I'm gonna go in and like use my phone, drink drink a can of drink a can of Guinness. Well, pretend to. Uh, I'm gonna put my feet. Nah, but they won't know that. I, I bought them. I'm such a minge bag. I didn't. I couldn't even buy a bottle of uh, cans of full Guinness. I was like, it's a waste of money. I was like, I'll get these because then I can take them home. Um, but yeah, I need someone to sit in the van, and then we're gonna swap places whilst we're driving. Like, <laughs> well, I don't. I don't think me and you are gonna be able to swap places, are we? Or you, Joe? Joe, it's gonna be you, lad. Viral, Joe. Not, even better, yeah. That's what we said. I go, have you got your license? And I go, no. And I'll go, oh, God, just just drive this for a sec. Ready? And then hey, we need you to rock the van. Hey, right, because I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I've crashed the van, and that's like the that's the uh, video for the. Right. So uh, me and Mick are gonna uh, just shoot to the lock up now and grab some bits. And um, yeah, we've just grabbed the GNF, but we need to get the steel in, don't we? Yeah. As soon as. And oh, I just can't be arsed going in the yard now and the neighbours just like filming us every time. And it's like, you think, what have, el what have, what have uh, Elf and Safety not got enough emails? But anyway, let's, uh, let's crack on. Right. Oh, now that's off. Oh, have you passed one of them? What have you got, Friday, Guinness? Friday, innit? Friday, lad, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Oh, right. Yeah, I need to be on the knees. Oh, have, you, uh, have you passed your test yet? No. No? Mm -hmm. Hold on, do you want to just drive this one? Just drive it out of licence, don't worry. Just... Hold on, hey, we need you to rock it. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you the show that I've got one, but I haven't got one. Like, you haven't got your license. Just That's a bit bumpy just, here, just isn't just it? Taxing them on the seat, under the hover on the road, the speed bumps. Yeah. Um. Who's that ringing now? Hi, right, mate. You right? Yeah. One sec. Just uh, just driving to the yard. I'll uh, I'll ring you back in a minute. Okay. No worries. Come. See you in a bit. I oh, imagine that went on YouTube. Lad. No. Oh, my legs are killing me. Oh. Oh. Right, do you know what? My legs are killing. Hey, right. do you want to drive? Yeah, just walk on. Oh, right there. Oh. 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 That. Sure, right. Hello, lads. Hello, <laughs> what do you want to say to the neighbours? Put your pen and paper down. Put your pen and paper down. We're not doing anything illegal. You can relax. Cancel the email to health and safety and the police and everyone else. And thanks for thanks for helping us to improve. Everyone's now in high vis with hard hats and masks and everything else and we're back we're back in business so we've left the concrete slab in in the extension this can now come out because we've got the genie lift lifted that up obviously got it in place on the pad stone so that side sat on the hot 100, uh, 100 mil into our side of the party ball with a block size pad stone it's probably oversized what we're doing and then we've got another block size pad stone on that bit that's going to come down and then this wall is going to tie into obviously the existing one so they, we know this is on hard ground so this bit will take obviously share some of the load um what height's that in a two six to the bottom yeah sound lovely joe's just going to brick up round that now and have you had the level on it nice what do we do when we're breaking concrete out? Water, dust suppression. Dust suppression. So if you want to soak the slab, just keep the dust down. And then what else you need? Goggles, gloves, high vis, earmuffs, anything else? Do you want to put some cotton wool down in case you fall? Yeah. Any bubble wrap to wrap myself up? Any or? bubble wrap? No, I think, I think that's... 
I think that'll please um, the neighbours. Just skip this section of the video. <laughs> yeah. So we're just on the yard again, and we've got a visitor from PHG Property, Plumbing and Gas Property. And you lived round here, didn't you? You were telling me you used to play on this builder's yard, didn't you? Can you confirm it was a builder's yard? Definitely a builder's yard. Because <laughs> I've got some people saying it wasn't a yard, even though it's on the title and everything. But you literally used to play on here. That one's not going in the crusher. What happens when that goes in the crusher? Yeah. It turns into a firework. Have you been on Western when we done it? No. You put it in, it go, hey, it literally goes like 25 metres in the air and it just lands, just lands, just lands somewhere. I don't even think with a hard hat on that would be enough. You'd have to have like a hard hat umbrella. Just throw it there. I know, I'm going to get rid of it. Why does it take like 30 seconds to turn that down? Doesn't it? The most, the least sensitive volume ever. So... The new plan is we're going to obviously extend this way out now, uh, 1.8 metres and across. That is because the cartilage of your land, so the back garden plus the front garden, 50% you can extend on permitted development. It's to stop people doing, let's just say you had a three metre garden and you could basically extend your whole garden and have no garden space. Um, it's to stop that, but... Um, you're going to end up with a little tiny garden and obviously to do that we're going to break this bit out now uh, we're going to scrape this all back so we can get 150 mil of hardcore 150 mil of insulation and 100 mil of um, concrete so then we've got what 100 250 3 4 400 so we need to be 400 from the front door 400 from that um, so yeah we'll scrape all this out get rid of it and then bring the crushed stone back in so the lads are just um we broke this out um the lads are throwing this onto the tipper now and we're gonna take that to the yard and bring back crushed stone to go in so everything on the yard has come from this house it's all the half bricks and um, slabs and everything else that we've done eco builders strike again and then we've got Mick on the trial over here. So because this is going to be the extension, he's put um, a block on our side of the party wall. And then the neighbour's side, obviously, we're going to put that back in brickwork. So the quicker we can do that, the better. Hey, put some um, put some wall ties in on the base if you can. Um, and what have you forgot? You forgot your damp proof. So you're gonna to have to take that corner down. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that a few times, you know. <laughs> you got you because you're doing that garden wall. He's done a poo poo. Oh no! Oh no! 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 So we're making full use of the trailer and the tipper at the minute to get as much charred go back to the yard in one trip. But again, it would be a lot better if we had a heavier, heavier van or a heavier truck. And um, we've got to cover this bit with the net. Good. So we're just at the yard now and we've just emptied the trailer and then we've just got And then I'm going to get the digger there and dig it onto the conveyor once we've moved that pile of brick really. But that'll be Monday. And then we'll crush all this pile, go through the full bricks. It's really nice, hard cold. Big fella. Look at Joe loves the big fellas. 
So what we do is we turn the actual jaw crusher off and we leave the shaker deck running for a bit just to try and obviously clear this bit out. And then what we've got to watch is look, see underneath, yeah. if the belt doesn't burn out. Do we get like getting a roof on a couple of bricks or something? Yeah. Just to keep it off the ground. Yeah, definitely. Right. Crush the fair bit there on me. Yeah. Get rid of that. And then I say we'll cut, uh, use the digger and hook that on. Good thing about this uh, mist jet system is. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I can just taste sweat. Mm -hmm. ah, hey. Um, Woo! These caps do get don't half get sweaty, don't you? Yeah. Woo! Hey, there's nothing against health and safety this, is there? Water. Share in comments. I <laughs> didn't even have to ask you. That's when you know the lads have worked hard when they're like, or either you've worked hard or it's hot. Or both. What is it? Oh. <laughs> You've worked hard or it's dead hot? Oh. Both. Ooh. Right, um, let's skedaddle. Wow, oh, it's hot. Oh, I think, do you know what? We moan. We moan when it's cold. We moan when it's too hot. I think that's just being English, isn't it? But what can I say? The lads today, I've just absolutely grafted. Got everything, got everything done that we, uh, we wanted them to, and more in a way. Yeah, just checking everything out. Yeah, and then um, the house next door, but one to us, is um, stripping. Uh, they're doing the same job as us, basically. Um, for another company and they've been skipping their bricks and I said well look I'll have them because I'll stack them on my yard and, and sell them so we should have we should have loads of bricks by the end of these jobs like loads of good ones which we'll either keep or I'll put on eBay or something we'll see what the uh, see what the going rate is but yeah I'm hoping that you know they'll start to pay for Pay for the yard and some of the machinery. Hopefully, help us grow. Oh, I've got this road a nightmare. Come on, someone's gonna let me out in a minute. Cheers, mate. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, good end to the week. Loads done. Um, while we were crushing, obviously the stone they've won, they had the other tipper that had the recycled stone on from yesterday. And you can see on the video now how how well that's worked. I'm, just, I'm so happy because it's like, you think of these ideas and you think, right, the shifter there and there, let's put a gate either side. And Mick said it worked perfect. Like they used the first gate and they just went along like the tipper. And then obviously they had it on the other side. So they just moved the shifter back and just obviously started tapping that that side of the um, com, um, tipper down, it all went in and he said they got it in dead quick compared to obviously tipping it and then having to spade and barrow it and whatever else so I'm happy that that's worked and it just gives me a bit of confidence in like you know coming up with ideas and trying to execute them that they will actually hopefully come off the way you're thinking because I know sometimes you you have an idea in your head of like, yeah, let's do this, let's use a grain shoot for doing this and put it either side and will it work, won't it? Because we could have done all that and then it didn't work and it made the, the back weaker and whatever else, so... And then I've got loads of ideas, loads of stuff I've got to do, so when it's tomorrow morning I'm going to try and box loads of this stuff off the... I've, um, I've been trying to do for ages, like Saturdays on the only days I can do it where we haven't got nine or ten lads in all and i've got to make sure we're getting value for money out of all of them so whoa. i am drained i will sleep i will sleep quickly tonight as soon as we head into the pillow i'll be gone and i 
I hope that you know no one takes offence to the video we've done. The reason I've done it is just to try and emphasise how petty and you know I don't really know what the right words are, but petty and like. I don't know, it's unnecessary really. If they do enough bits like that, the, it'll be like the boy who cried wolf, you know, they're just sending in stupid, stupid things that, you know, people are potentially dying on sites and they're sending in stuff that, oh, he's carrying a bucket with, you know, without a dust mask on and stuff, and you think. But yeah, um, hopefully no one takes offence to it and you can see it, it is just what it is, a light-hearted joke to try and emphasise the situation and the scenarios that I've somehow found myself in. Um, but yeah, next week set up nicely. So on that job, obviously we're going to extend the kitchen now. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll brick that up and then we'll most likely try and get that in uh, concreted then. And then that's when we might hand over to the other builder, we'll see. See how far he wants us to take it, how busy he is. But yeah, have a good um, have a good weekend and hopefully you're happy that we're back. We're back and better than ever before, safer and compliant is the right word. We are fully compliant. Alright, have a good weekend.